switch. So, if you can recall, we've got the uh, two red switches on uh, in the wardrobe, the beige switches with the red illumination lights on it. And what I'm looking to read up here is the Ultra Store. The Ultra Store, because we're storing water, it's a storage situation. So just at the top there, it says Ultra Store. And on this dial, it says Ultra Heat. Uh, so that's for the room heater. And this is actually for the water heater. And this is to operate it on a gas system side of it, not mains, but gas. So Ultra Heat is on this side, which is the room heater of the motorhome. So to room, uh, heat the room temperature. And I say, this is on the uh, Ultra Store. What you do is rotate the silver dial so that it's into the gas location there. Uh, and that is to set the water temperature. So on the gas side of stuff, you can actually change the temperature within the boiler. The maximum it can go up to is 70 degrees. Quite warm. Um, in fact, really quite close to scalding. So do be aware that when you are operating the hot water tap, when this is working, uh, it can get very warm. Don't have the water aimed at you if you're having a shower. Also, just to aid you on the water side, on the Ultra Store, I've removed already the external flue cow cover, which is outside, because uh, it's a balanced flue boiler. What you need to do to be able to remove that, I don't know if you can uh, zoom in on that little image there. What it's saying is you press it in the middle here, and at the same time as pressing inwards, you put it that way. And what it does is just lift these two little lugs off a little latch, and it just pulls right forward and then it drops to the floor. It's, it's, it's that process. So you push it, you pull it back at the same time. That's the double process you need to remove that flue cow cover. If that's not removed, the uh, fumes being produced and the air oxygen that is required for the boiler to work, uh, it will fail. And as you can see at the moment, we have got a green light on the ultra store system. There's a green light there saying it's, it's working fine. If we get green and red there, it's telling you you have got a gas a, a, a failure for some reason or other. Mainly, it's because of this, or that the gas supply has not actually reached through to the boiler first within 10 seconds. So you can operate it just on gas alone. We can also operate it on mains electrics, as I said. And I said they were the only switches, uh, the first switches. They're the only switches now I've realized uh, what I was looking for is something else similar to this dial here, again saying Ultra Store. It's not located in this vehicle, so the beige switches which are in the wardrobe with the illumination on is the only switches which bring supply to those particular appliances and they do turn on at that point. I'm contradicting myself there, so I apologise on that. Um, while I'm also here, I may as well do the, uh, the Ultra Heat at the same time. So what we've got here no, I'm going to contradict myself slightly. <laughs> uh, this is mains now, not, not gas. This is mains electrics. Because what we've got here, the silver dial, as you rotate it, that's now gone off. As you can see, the green lights disappeared. So that's the off position. That little, that little nipple there is the off position near that O. You rotate it, and you can see I've got 500, that location there, and a green light come on. Rotate it again. I've got 1,000, which is one kilowatt. If I rotate it in an upward direction, that's now two kilowatts. And there are reasons why the two and the 500 and the 1,000 are separated from the 2,000. So I'm going to come to uh, the reasons why as we come round towards the boiler itself. So this is your fire, your heater itself. This is what heats the room. So bear in mind about that control. I'll come back to that in a second. This is the gas side operation of the fire. So I've got the valve and I've got a piece of igniter. So they're the first two items there. On this side, on the fascia, we've got what we call blown air. Now blown air is a fan that draws air over the heat exchange, heats it up, and then pumps it out at floor level. Around the various areas within this motorhome, you're gonna find round ducts. There's one on the edge of this bed frame down here. There's a round hole down there. Yep. And uh, there's gonna be one in the bathroom. You're gonna find another one down by the door, I hope. Can't see the one down by the door. Can't see any more that I'm looking for right now, but there will be more than what I've shown you, i.e. that one down there and the one in the bathroom. Uh, you normally have about four in total. Uh, but that's where then the heat is generated out of those holes, and that's what's uh, operating that, that flow. But let's come to the gas. Turn it from zero all the way around to number 10. 
and I've got it in that position there. I press the valve down and hold it down. And while I'm doing that, I then simultaneously press the piezo igniter. And also while I'm doing that, I'm looking to see if I can find the, the pilot light. Where I locate the pilot light is looking approximately at a 45 degree angle through this little uh, window here. And if you can just, uh, forgive me, I'm gonna just hopefully see if I can get it in the right location. Ah, says he, there it is. There's the pilot light. Now if I could keep the camera steady in the right location. Thank you. I'm gonna release it. Did you see the flame come bigger? Yeah. There's pilot light main burner so what I'm doing to get the main burner I'm releasing the valve after 10 seconds so I've got it depressed release and the main burner cuts in so that's what you're looking for is you're looking through that window just to see if uh, if that works and now I'm producing convection heat from this area here um, I haven't asked blown air to I haven't asked blown air to work with it uh, so that's not working at the moment, the blown air side. All the heat's being produced inside the caravan is coming directly from this area going upwards. Uh, so down at floor level, you could have a cold floor space, uh, and that's where you use the blown air to actually draw the air in at, down at floor level, direct the heat down at floor level, and you get a more even ambient temperature. Number 10 setting doesn't mean a great deal to anybody, uh, there's no particular uh, temperature associated to the numbering from 1 to 10. It really varies on different size of vehicles that this heater can be fitted into. Um, so what I say normally, if your vehicles are around about the four, 12 to 14 foot size vehicle, normally operating 1 to 5, you might find sufficient to keep a caravan, uh, caravan or the motorhome uh, warm. Uh, but if you're on larger vehicles, then you probably need it high, operating on the higher numbers to establish the similar heat. At the moment, we've got it operating on 10. I'm just going to rotate the dial down because I'm going to tell you when it goes down onto pilot light again. Because obviously today's warm. Okay, that's just gone down to pilot light and it's around about just below the four where the pilot light's dropped into, into play. If I rotate that just one segment, there it is. Did you hear the boiler cooked in? It's cut in again and I'm just below the five. So you can play with that to establish what you feel more comfortable with within your particular motorhome, how you want the heat to be. Obviously in the winter time, you are gonna need it operating on higher numbers. The reason why I've shown you that is because when we come to the fan, we can operate it in conjunction with this particular uh, thermostat there. Right, the blown air, is in an off position. This is a 12 volt fan, not mains, this is 12 volts. That is off right there with that single dot. I'm moving the, lo the locator switch either to the left, which is a manual control. You are manually setting the speed that the fan operates at. So I can go all the way down to one or I could bring the speed right up to number five. And you can hear, hear the increase in, uh, in the flow, airflow. That's off, as I say. And if I put it in that position there where the A is, it's automatic. It works in conjunction with the heater itself. If I've only just turned the heater on, the heat exchange is cold. The fan only turns over very slowly. As that heater gets warm, uh, that fan senses that and then it will operate at a higher speed level to uh, distribute the, air, the heat that is actually generated. But it will only work to the highest speed level where you leave that switch to be. So if you only ask it to work to the highest level of three, that's the highest it's going to get to. If you rotate it to four, that's gonna be the highest level or five. So the variant on automatic is one to five right now, or one to four, or from one to three. They're the variable span speeds that you can have when on automatics. Well, I normally say if you're on five and above, you need it on a higher fan speed. If you're on five and below, you can operate it on the lower fan speeds. Number three being halfway, so you separate that how you wish to. Now that's working with gas. The beauty of this particular fire is you can also use it with mains electrics at the same time as using it with gas. So you've got double the heat output that uh, you can have with some of the heaters. Uh, so I'm asking gas to stay on. 
And now I'm coming back up to the wall switch, which says ultra heat. And remember me coming back to this 500 and 1,000 setting and a 2,000. Right, so that's half a kilowatt. 500, half a kilowatt. 1,000, one kilowatt. 2,000, two kilowatt. The reason why it doesn't go 500,000, 2,000 is because on the lower settings, any of the 1,000 or the 500, I do not have to have blown air working with it. However, if I decide to use it at 2 kilowatt, 2,000, I must have blown air working with it. The heat that it generates is very powerful and needs the assistance of the blown air to distribute the heat that's being generated. So that's the reason why 2000 is in a different location to the 500 or 1000. 500 or 1000, you can just use it as background heat without a blown air working if you wish. And again, if I don't get a red light on there, uh, I know the system's working fine, but you can get red lights and red lights are normally warning along with the green. If I've had it working on 2000 for a period of time, say I've, I've used, been using this now at that setting for an hour, the first thing I want to do is to turn it off. Now do remember, I have asked for the fan to work with it. That fan wants to continue to work for at least another 30 seconds after you've removed the heat source. If you haven't removed the heat source uh, and I turn the fan off, the next time I come to operate the fan uh, or, or the heater, on mains electrics it won't work it's got a thermal cutout switch built into the system which will stop it from working when you come to turn it on so just be aware of it just allow 30 seconds after you turn that switch off there to allow the fan to continue to run when it's on automatic or manual i'm not worried but just allow the fan to continue to work it cools the heater elements down and stops it from tripping out next time hopefully that makes sense for you